Welcome everyone to Gamer Mill. Today we've got some really big news, starting with AMD's claim that 7 nanometers plus beats Intel's 10 nanometers. 7 nanometer chips may soon have stock issues, RTX GPUs will come with a treat, and Logitech's new mouse looks amazing. But first, are you sick of subscriptions? It seems like every company has them, and after a while it gets tough to keep up. And guess what? They rely on that. They're hoping you forget. But now you can with today's sponsor, Privacy.com, a free tool that lets you create virtual cords to easily control your subscriptions or any online purchases in one place. Plus, you can add limits to every card on how much is taken out monthly or even total. So there's no more surprise price increases or double billing, and you can determine upfront when the subscription ends. To top it off, when you're ready to cancel a subscription, just delete the virtual card. No more hunting for unsubscribe. Oh, and did I mention it's free? In fact, you get $5 free for just adding your funding source today using privacy.com slash gamermeld. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, we have a huge story directly from AMD. During this year's HPE cast, a conference by Hewlett Packard on enterprise computing, AMD shared a slide on their next generation Epic CPUs codenamed Milan. Now, before you wonder why I'm talking server chips, it's because this easily translates to Ryzen as well. Just like all of their previous generations, Next Gen Epic will ultimately be based on the same architecture as Next Gen Ryzen, which is Zen 3. Moving back to the slide, you can see that AMD is claiming better performance at the same wattage to Intel's current 10 nanometer process. Now, remember that Intel is supposedly planning on releasing 10 nanometer server chips pretty soon. And I say supposedly because we pretty well know Intel chose low power notebook chips for their initial release because either yield rates are too low or they can't ramp production enough just yet. Either way, going from that to full-blown server processors seems like a stretch and they've already pushed the release back years at this point. But hey, let's say they do it. Intel releases everything one time. Well, according to this, and I will put a disclaimer on that because it is coming from AMD and it's always best to wait for third party reviews. Still, if this does end up being true, Intel has to be banging their heads because 10 nanometers would have been amazing had they released it when they initially planned. But after delay after delay, year after year, AMD has had time to respond. With that said, I'll also mention that Intel's current roadmap shows some 10 nanometer plus next year, and there's a chance the next year's desktop chips will skip 10 nanometers and go straight to 10 nanometers plus, so Intel could have a counter, but so far things are really looking bad for the company both now and in the future. Then again, AMD may soon find itself in a similar boat as Intel did not too long ago. In a recent report by DigiTimes, TSMC, the semiconductor manufacturer for AMD's current Zen 2 based chips, is apparently having trouble keeping up with demand for their 7 nanometer nodes. Basically, between smartphones, AMD chips, and everything else being built on the node, TSMC has been forced to push lead times back to nearly six months. Now they're reportedly working on adding budget to expand their capacity, but that won't be complete until the second quarter of next year. Basically, if you planned on going third gen Ryzen, you better watch pricing and stock, as they may soon be fluctuating depending on how much stock AMD has. Fingers crossed, things won't get as bad as it did for Intel last year. Next up for today, Nvidia has announced that they're bundling Call of Duty Modern Warfare, not that one, the new one, in with RTX GPUs for a limited time. Now, I'll say that this sounds like a smart move because Modern Warfare supports ray tracing, so this way you don't have to buy a new game to experience the feature you just paid a good bit of money to get, and the game is free with either RTX GPUs on desktop or laptops. Lastly for today, I don't typically cover peripherals and this isn't sponsored or anything, I just had to cover it. Logitech just announced a mouse called the G604, and it's obviously the successor to the G602, which is probably my favorite gaming wireless mouse out there. And the reason why, besides the ergonomics, is because it actually lasts longer than half a day's use. The G602 lasts a rated 250 hours on two AA batteries, and while it goes down when using the gaming mode, I honestly don't feel a difference between either modes. Anyway, the new G604 clearly takes notes from the G602 and ups it to ridiculous levels. This new mouse actually offers 240 hours on a single AA battery. One AA battery, and it comes with one millisecond lag, their Hero 16K sensor from the G502, and 15 programmable buttons. If you like it, it's available for pre-order for around $100, and I honestly may get one and do a review. If you want to see that, let me know down in the comments below. So while that does it for today, what did you think of the news? Excited for next gen Ryzen or are you more hopeful on 10 nanometers plus? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out privacy.com gamermel to get $5 free today. And as always, have a great day.